Good morning. So action cams have come a long way. I've been following the GoPro development for many years. Um, at first I wasn't really impressed with those cameras. I didn't really see the value of them. You know, I like to frame my picture and I I come from an old school DSLR with an optical viewfinder where you really hunt for the image and um, yeah, the framing is really part of making the photo. Uh, I, I, don't, I didn't see it as like taking a photo but as making it. You, you're, you're making the composition and the story with that and you know having all the controls over things like the shutter and the ISO diaphragm to make it look and feel exactly as it needs to be but with the years I've, I've gotten quite um, loose I like it to be uh, more fluid and natural and quite frankly I'm more focused on figuring out the content literally like what what is it you're trying to say not so much through the framing but you know through the story or the message and so I've been really interested in in um, getting a new camera for a while now and it started actually with the uh, 360 cameras because those seem to be very handy to work in a post production kind of environment where we'll frame and, and um, adapt to what is happening at a later point. This especially because I wanted to create more of a system for how-to's like a companion camera that can help you uh, show how some things are done because I believe that it's a it's a time where we can learn so much from each other that I just wanted to find a way to make it easier to share that kind of stuff and 360 camera will be pretty much ideal for that, but I wasn't too impressed with the quality. Only when it started to come to the X3 from Insta360, I thought, yeah, okay, this is it. Now, now I want to jump in. I want to work with this. And I got the camera, and the hardware looked absolutely amazing. I loved it. Really sturdy and Nicely designed, amazing machine. I thought this this is going to be so good. And uh, as soon as I switched it on, and I had a feeling this might happen, so I, I switched on my EMF meter because being as extremely sensitized as I am, it's a it's an important thing. It's a deal breaker, in fact, to know if Bluetooth and Wi-Fi can be switched off. And as soon as I switched on the camera. It, uh, it put out this really high-level signal very annoying didn't give me much time to fiddle around with uh, with the settings but you know I, I went through all of them and there was no option to switch it off um, that was an incredible disappointment I tried to make it work for me because I thought well you know still a fantastic camera but maybe I can shield off the, the EMF. Maybe I can shield off the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi. And uh, there was no way. I, I taped the whole bugger in with uh, alu foil tape. Um, shield off everything I could. But it was still coming through the lens because yeah, obviously you can't shield off the lens. And well, the lens is the back and front lens. 
and uh, I had to return it. There was just no way. Um, I can't use a camera like that that will give me headaches within 10, 15, 20 minutes of use depending on how, what my physical state is that day. So there, there's no point. Plus, on a more subtle level, not, not just about um, getting the headaches and that, that can turn into full-on uh, migraines, is the, uh, is the fact that um, I lose my train of thought. You know what we, we call these days uh, brain fog. That is the sort of thing that is becoming normal, which didn't used to be normal to have brain fog. Um, yeah, what's the point of, of having having a camera to, um, you know, oh, record brain fog, empty thoughts, uh, a brain that is just not in tune, not in flow, not channeling that what you would want to express or say, or where it needs to go. I mean, the art of sharing and communicating is subtle. It, it comes from a place uh, that you can't always predict, you know? We can, we can maybe write a story. I don't, I, don't, I don't write scripts or stories, and maybe that's, you know, to my detriment. It would create a waffling uh, video and too much of a um, meandering story. But uh, a fact is, I can't really do that work off a script. I, I, I forget the, the line and the text, and maybe I should have a prompter. And oh god, it really just uh, becomes too uh, too much of a job. I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I want to share things with the world what I can. And. Uh, Hopefully there's something useful or exciting for it. And if not, well, pff, tough luck, you know. Uh, we're a bit spoiled with um, incredible quality. And, you know, <laughs> I am thankful for that. But my quest is to find easier ways of sharing what, what's, what's the, what comes to the point. And that's funny then to, um, use this waffling analogy and not being uh, really committed to scripting stuff but I think that is the path more for me and that's why I'm so interested in like action cams and 360 cams and especially the latest models are amazing uh, from what I can tell from the reviews that's like an ideal camera uh, amazing picture quality amazing sound quality and something I really would want but none of those cameras have the option to switch off the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi they just keep emitting RF signals which are at such a strength that they debilitate me they block my thoughts and they um, just are painful to use and so they're absolutely not an option so I'm using this old little uh, Sony video camera it's it's not like really old I mean the model is I guess seven eight nine years uh, old already doesn't have Wi-Fi doesn't have Bluetooth uh, luckily it has stabilization and that's a good thing and I guess the sound is pretty good so I don't have to muck around with uh, with the sound input because it doesn't have a sound input it, it's quite a um, yeah simple camera and I guess that will have to suffice for now, you know. Um, I would buy either one of the three available action cams instantly. The DJI, the GoPro, or the 360. Um, without any hesitation, because they're all of amazing quality. Um, but... None of them offer a wireless-free operation. You know, I don't mind if it needs to be switched on for a moment to, I don't know, to 
get some updates or whatever. But it's got a bloody USB-C connection. You know, let me just connect it to the computer and do my stuff there. I don't need to connect it to a smartphone. And I can see they're amazing apps and it does work really well. But, what? What if I don't want to? I mean, I think that's the, the basic premise of any kind of technology is that you can work with it uh, in multiple ways. There always has to be another option, another backup plan, a redundancy. If you have a broken port here, then you've got another one there. If this kind of uh, action doesn't work through the keyboard, then you do it through the mouse. If it doesn't go through that shortcut, maybe you can make this macro. Something, something needs to give. There needs to be another option. In this case, all the action cams give you is just one option. And that's it. And if that doesn't work for you, well, tough luck. And I understand that it likely has to do with, uh, how shall we say, um, cost. Because it's probably easier to just uh, not have to deal with people for whom something isn't working because they haven't switched on the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi or accidentally switched it off and now are wondering why the hell they can't do this or that and the extra customer service that that involves, maybe that is a an op an, 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 an way into that thought process, but, you know, uh, give us back that option. It's the same for Bluetooth speakers. It's so bloody annoying. And I know for a lot of people, it doesn't really um, make any sense that there is something like electrosensitivity, but, Believe me, you will hear a lot more about it because we are a lot more exposed to all these radio waves and their effects have been documented for decades. It's just that, you know, it's the same time or the same situation we have with smoking where it was so normal that it was unimaginable to have a, a, a place of non-smoking. Like in a cafe, in a restaurant, and a, a what? A non-smoking table. Wow, that's a novel idea. Well, good luck with that. Literally, that, I mean, that was within my lifetime. It, it's, it's, it, it seemed crazy back then, and now it seems crazy that there will be smoking everywhere everywhere from in trains I mean I haven't really I'm not that old that I know that, that they were smoking at the doctor but you know that is that is where we came back from and now with this toxin because yes RF is a toxin it affects the body on non-thermal levels and it has biological effects even though industry and government would try to just ignore that blatantly ignore that Obviously. Anyway, uh, I'm sure that the Ace 360 Pro would be uh, would be better at um, you know stopping the wind noise. So this is probably really annoying to listen to. Uh, all I can say is it's a beautiful, wonderful morning. The sun is rising behind the hills. The golden light is coming. And uh, I better do some sun salutations and have a jump in the ocean because, yep, that's what I do. Well, ta da! See you in the next one.